Base launch checked on countdown net. Pad is clear. Ten, nine, eight. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing legs have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it prepares for liftoff at 12.27 a.m. Eastern. Engine chill has started. Good evening. My name is Jesse Anderson. I'm joining you today from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Today marks SpaceX's 26th launch of the year, and this will be a record third launch in less than 48 hours. For those of you following along, you know that Starlink lifted off from Kennedy Space Center Friday morning, followed by SARA-1 from Vandenberg Space Force Base about 14 hours ago. And now you're watching the launch of Global Star's FM-15 Spare satellite from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. FM-15 is the 25th and last satellite in the second generation constellation. The other 24 satellites were launched in four campaigns throughout 2010 to 2013. Stage one RP-1 load is complete. The second generation constellation was designed and manufactured by Talus Alenia Space, primarily in Cannes, France and Rome, Italy. FM-15 will help extend the useful life of the second generation constellation and will ultimately provide service concurrent with Global Star's new fleet of satellites procured by MDA and Rocket Lab, which is expected to launch in approximately three years. Now at T minus five minutes and 40 seconds to go, conditions for liftoff today are looking pretty good. We do have 80% favorability for weather today at T0. The range is ready to support and is currently green for launch. And as you may, may be able to hear some of the sounds from the vehicle, we began loading our propellants on both stages of the vehicle at T minus 35 minutes. And at the moment, the vehicle and payload are in good health. And speaking of the vehicle, Falcon 9 is a reusable two-stage rocket, which means that it's basically two rockets in one, the first and the second stage. Now, the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage and is the primary part of the rocket that gets reused multiple times. The dark Falcon 9 tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. The dark sit that you see around the lower part of the first stage are remnants from its previous eight launches for this booster. And we will be attempting to recover the booster again today using our drone ship, which you see there on your screen. Just read the instructions. At the moment, the Global Star FM-15 satellite is currently enclosed. Strong back retract has started. The Global Star FM-15 satellite is currently enclosed in our payload fairing at the very top of the rocket, and that is what you see on your screen. The job of the fairing is to protect the satellite until we reach the vacuum of space. Once we're in space, we no longer need this protection, so we'll separate the fairing halves and attempt to retrieve them once they return back down to Earth. Now, for those of you who are interested in learning more about Falcon 9, be sure to check out our website, SpaceX.com, for more details. Now, we did hear the call out that the transporter erector, or what they called the strong back, is retracting. Now, the TE moves away from the vehicle to clear the way for Falcon 9 when it lifts off at T0. And there you can see it's, it's a little hard to see, but you can see the clamp arms are opened up and the transporter erector is retracted away from the vehicle. Now, if for some reason we are not able to launch today, we do have a backup opportunity on Monday at 12.05 a.m. Eastern Time. Falcon 9 and the Global Star FM, pay FM 15 payload is lifting off from Pad 40 today. Space Launch Complex 40 is located in Florida at the north end of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Now, here's an interesting fact Stage about the pad. Stage load is complete. 
And we just heard locks load complete on the first stage. And stage one, Poco. Here's an interesting fact about Pad 40. Before SpaceX, Slick 40 was used by the United States Air Force to launch Titan vehicles from the mid 60s through Titan's retirement in 2005. Then Pad 40 was leased to SpaceX to support Falcon launches in 2007. And we are just under T minus three minutes from T zero. We did hear the call out that stage one LOX load is complete. Around the T minus two minute mark will be when the LOX load completes on the second stage and that will conclude propellant loading for both vehicles for the Falcon 9 vehicle. And we're just about 15 seconds away from that call out. Stage two, locks load is complete. And there's that call out. Locks loading is complete, which means that propellant loading on Falcon 9 is complete. So now that we have finished locks loading, we are now venting out the liquid oxygen line on the transporter rector, and that is why you see... Launch gas closeouts has started. That's why you see those white clouds on your screen. And we are coming up on T minus one minute. That will be when Falcon 9 is in startup. We should hear that call out for startup. And that's when the flight computers take over the launch countdown. This vehicle is autonomous, so at the T minus one minute mark, the computers take over the vehicle. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out. Now just waiting for the final call from the launch director here in a few seconds. LD, go for launch. And great news, there is the go for launch. So all systems are go for Falcon 9 to take our Global Star FM-15 satellite out into space. T minus 30 seconds. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off. Power and telemetry are nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off with Global Star FM 15 satellites and has throttled down to prepare for Max Q. Max Q is the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures that the vehicle sees during ascent and is coming up here. Coming up here in a few seconds. Max Q. Great call out that we've now passed through that period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Next up will be three events and they will be happening back to back from each other. That will be MECO stage separation and SES-1. MECO stands for main engine. Back engine chill has started. Great call outs there. MECO stands for main engine cutoff, and that is referring to the nine Merlin engines on the first stage. 
And we've got a great view here. We should be able to see those nine engines shut down, and that helps prepare for the second event, which is stage separation. That's where the first stage separates from the second stage. And the third event will be SES-1, which is where the second stage engine starts up for the first time on its journey today. And those three events, again, are Miko stage separation and SES-1 coming up here in just a few seconds. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MFAC ignition. And some great call outs there. We did just see Miko with the first stage engines shutting down, stage separation, and SES-1. We saw that startup of the MVAC engine on the second stage. Now what you're seeing on your screen is a view of the first stage with the grid fins deploying there. Acquisition signal, Premiere. Now these grid fins are helping to steer the first stage back to its landing zone. Today is just read the instructions, our drone ship waiting off the coast of Florida for this vehicle to return back home to Earth. And it is nighttime over there on the East Coast, so it is a bit dark, but you can see, it, this is a view of the first stage, and you can see some bursts of nitrogen, those are those uh, flashes that you see there, and that is used for attitude control, and that's what the vehicle... Start of mid-flight guide, stage two is on nominal trajectory. Good call-outs with stage two. Those nitrogen bursts are what the vehicle uses to help guide the vehicle back to its landing zone. And in order to complete landing today, the first stage will have two more burns left, Next up will be the entry burn, and that's where three of the nine Merlin engines will, will reignite. And that helps to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, that burn is about a 20 second burn. After it shuts down, the atmosphere actually helps grab most of the velocity on the first stage. So when we get closer to landing, we only need a single engine burn for the landing burn, and that's the single E9 engine in the center of the vehicle. Now we are just about three minutes away from the entry burn beginning on the first stage. And as I previously mentioned, you could see on the vehicle the, the SIP markings that were left over from previous flights. And just a quick explanation of how that happens. The rocket grade kerosene or RP-1 used to fuel Falcon 9 is carbon based. And so when it burns, it generates a soot. And as I was talking about the entry burn, the vehicle enters back into the Earth's atmosphere engines first. So when we do reignite those engines, that's how the soot gets back onto the vehicle. It's because it is basically flying through its own plume. Stage two on nominal trajectory. And stage two is on a nominal trajectory. For today's mission, we do have three burns of the MVAC engine in order to make its way to its drop-off orbit for the, the satellite today. Now we were able to see the grid fins on the first stage just for a quick few seconds. 
Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage, which is near the base of the inner stage. And that's what the vehicle uses for steering as it makes its way back to Earth. Thank you, FTS is safe. And they help orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the, the vehicle during its descent. And again, today we will be attempting to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. If you're just now joining us, we did have a successful liftoff from pad 40 at 12.27 a.m. Eastern time. We had a successful MECO stage separation and second stage engine start. And we have been hearing good call outs of the first stage, uh, second stage trajectory. Again, today we will have three ignitions of our MVAC engine. And actually today, during the landing burn, we will have uh, the first Seco one, which is second stage engine cutoff one. So we'll have a couple call outs. Stage two on nominal trajectory. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. And great news. And as you can see on your screen, the entry burn has begun for the first stage. This will last about 20 seconds long. Again, this is helping slow the vehicle down as it's entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. Acquisition of signal, Newfoundland. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. And as the screen goes dark, that means that those engines have shut down and we did hear the call out for entry burn shut down. Now we are about less than a minute away from the landing burn beginning on the first stage. And as I was mentioning, the landing burn conclusion will happen around the same time as Seco 1 on second stage. That is second engine cutoff 1. We're just about 20 seconds away from the landing burn beginning. Again, it's just the, the center E9 engine that ignites stage for one, landing. Iconic. And each one of these Merlin engines has about 190,000 pounds of thrust, and that's just enough. Terminal guidance. It's just enough to help the vehicle slow down and touch down for landing. Stage one landing burn. And there's that call out. Stage one landing burn. Now the four landing legs should deploy just a few seconds before touchdown. So let's watch as Falcon 9 attempts to land on just read the instructions. Stage one landing leg deploy. Yeah. And Stage one landing confirmed. Awesome view. Stage one has landed. This marks our 126th overall successful recovery of an orbital class Nominal rocket. Orbit and that includes Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stage landings. And we just heard the call out for a nominal orbital insertion on the second stage. So with that, we are going to be in a coast phase until just before we relight the MVAC engine again on the second stage. So sit back and enjoy the space jams, and we'll see you just after the T plus one hour mark.
boggled the mind. And the technology caught up, didn't it?
Welcome back to the webcast for the launch of Global Star FM 15. We had an on-time liftoff from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 12.27 a.m. Eastern Time and a successful landing of our first day's booster off the coast of Florida. FM-15 is the 25th and last satellite in the second generation constellation. The other 24 satellites were launched in four campaigns throughout 2010 to 2013. The second generation constellation was designed and manufactured by Talis Alenia Space, primarily in Cannes, France, and Rome, Italy. And we are now currently awaiting the relight of our second stage engine in just a few seconds here. And there we got a quick view of SES-2 and Seco-2 on that MVAC engine. And we did hear the call out for confirmation of good orbit. So before we deploy the FM-15 satellite for our customer Global Star, we have a third and final ignition of our second stage MVAC engine. We are expecting this relight in about 40 minutes. Until then, we're going to leave you with a map showcasing where we are in the mission. We'll see you soon. Nominal orbit insertion.
and expect the bus to signal Tasmania.
acquisition signal of Vandenberg.
Thanks for tuning in to watch the Global Star FM15 mission. We had an on-time liftoff from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 12.27 a.m. Eastern Time and a successful landing of our first stage booster off the coast of Florida. Now we're currently waiting the final relight of our second stage engine in just a few seconds. And there we have had a short burn, SES-3 and SECO-3, which is second stage engine cutoff. And we are just waiting for confirmation of good orbit. If you're just now joining us, we just concluded the third burn of the MVAC engine on the second stage, and we are just Terminal waiting. Orbit insertion. And there it is, that call out for confirmation of good orbit. Now up next, at about T plus one hour and 53 minutes, will be the deploy of the Global Star FM-15 satellite. So we'll see you back here just before to catch payload separation.
You're watching the live webcast for the Global Star FM-15 mission, which lifted off from Launch Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station almost two hours ago now. And we are now waiting for the deployment of the 25th and final satellite in the second generation constellation. Global Star, separation confirmed. An awesome view. You can see the Global Star FM-15 satellite drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage. With a successful deployment of the Global Star FM-15 satellite, that will bring our webcast to a close. We want to thank our customer for entrusting us with tonight's mission. This launch completes a record three mission triple header in less than 48 hours. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.